subscribe to our channel for latest video series on GAIN, UGC, NET and more. Also press the bell icon so that you never miss an update on any latest video. For more information you can visit our website or call on the numbers below. Now we look at system functions of discrete time system. So uh, if you just remember we started studying this topic, we started studying Laplace or Z transform because we uh, we had this point in mind that it is going to change our typical complicated convolution operation into simple multiplication operation right we if we need to calculate output for a system we do not need to perform convolution in time domain we can just perform simple multiplication in Z uh, domain or Laplace domain to obtain the output of a function so now what we are doing is uh, we are just trying to find out system function, system function or like we had impulse response for discrete time system. Similarly, we have system function in this Z domain. Okay, so we know that whenever you are applying an input Xn to a system with impulse response Hn, then output of the system is given by convolution operation of this Xn with h of n right and now if you apply the convolution property of z transform what do you obtain you obtain that y of z is going to be equal to x of z into hz right where this xz hz and yz are respectively the uh, z transforms of xn hn and yn right now what do what can you write from here what can you write hz as hz can be written as yz upon xz which is actually transformation of the output divided by transformation of the input so the z transform hz of this transfer function of this impulse response hn is referred to as the system function or transfer function this is what we are calling as system function or transfer function okay which actually transfers the input to the output okay system function can also be defined as ratio of z transform output yn and the input xn now what is this hz going to do the system function hz completely characterizes the system okay we've already seen this in uh, laplace domain also we see this again suppose this is my system we am applying an input xn this is the impulse response of the system then output for this system is going to be convolution of the input with the system function for the impulse response now suppose I transform the complete system into Z domain then this Z is going to be my system function input transformation is going to be XZ and consequently output can be given as multiplication of Z transformations of the input and the impulse responses transformation of the impulse response only we are calling as the system function okay now we see how we can characterize a discrete time LTI system using this system function right so many properties of discrete time LTI system can be closely as associated with actually the characteristics of HZ in the Z plane and its pole locations and ROC right so first we see how can we judge causality of a system by its uh, system function hz now you know that for a causal discrete time lti system we require that its impulse response should be zero for all time instances before zero so hn should be zero for n less than zero now here if you see hn is a right sided signal right if it has it has value zero for n less than zero which means that hn is a right sided signal if hn is a right sided signal then corresponding requirement on hz is that roc of hz roc of hz must be of the form mod z greater than r max we've seen this right for a right sided signal roc is going to be of the form mod z greater than r max then what can we say we can say that roc is the roc is the exterior of a circle containing all the poles of hz roc is the ex exterior of a circle containing containing all the poles of hz all the poles of hz in z plane right so if the system is anti-causal which is uh, this hn is 0 for n greater than 0 well which means hn is a left sided signal then roc of hz is going to be the form mod z less than r minimum or roc is going to be the interior of a circle containing no poles of hz right uh, we do not consider anti-causal systems anyway, so we are not writing it. Now, if you have to judge stability of a system, if you want 
at the system to be stable. Then we discuss that a discrete time LTI system is BBO stable if if mod if summation n from minus infinity to infinity mod h n. This is absolutely summable, which means that it should have a finite value, right? Then the corresponding requirement on h z is going to be that this h z contains the unit circle R O C of h z contains unit circle unit circle means contains mod z equal to 1 see why is this happening if you try to find out the h z we know h z is going to be defined as summation of n from minus infinity to infinity h n z to the power minus n now what am i saying is i suppose that z is equal to e j sigma see uh, whatever i done is actually z is equal to r e j ohm right j this is this is a phase of this z and r is a magnitude i have considered that magnitude of this z is 1 why so that mod z which is going to be equal to mod of this e j ohm this equals 1 see if this mod z is equal to 1 then what is going to happen mod of this h at e j ohm this is going to be equal to summation from minus infinity to infinity h of n into it is by minus j ohm n. Right? Now using the Schwarz inequality, we know that this is going to be less than or equal to mod of h n into mod of u to the power minus j ohm n. Now since this does not have any magnitude, this just signifies phase, magnitude of this is going to be 1. Now this is going to be summation n is equal to minus infinity to infinity mod of h n. Now we know that for a stable system, this value is going to be less than infinity. That is, it is going to be finite value. So we see that if the system is stable, if the system is stable, then this h z converges for z is equal to e j ohm. This converges for this value. See, converging of a system means that it has finite value at that point. Now, when we put z is equal to e j ohm, this, this system function converged. Converged means had a finite value. Therefore, we can conclude that, what can we say? For a stable discrete time LTI system, stable LTI discrete time system, ROC of HZ, ROC of HZ must contain, see if this, if this uh, system function, if this HZ converged for this value, it means that its ROC must contain this point. Okay, so that is why ROC is actually a group of those points for which this uh, function, the for which the Z transform converges, right? So ROC of H of Z must contain unit circle, unit circle or what can I say or mod z equal to one point. So this is why we are saying that for a system to be stable, ROC of its transfer function must contain the unit circle. Now if I just combine the last two uh, conclusions, so I can say that if the system, if my system is both stable and causal, both stable and causal then all the poles of hz all the poles of hz must lie inside the unit circle must lie inside the unit circle of the z plane right because we know that roc is going to be uh, out exterior to the circle containing the exterior to the circle containing all the poles and for a system to be stable it must contain the unit circle that is why what we can say if the system is, has to be both causal and stable and all the poles of z must lie inside the unit circle of the z plane right so this is this is going to be my one conclusion if i want the system to be causal as well as stable right 